right? with that we can move on to T5. So if you hear the word T5, it's one of the most famous models these days when it comes to language modeling. You are referring to this. And it's T5 because there are five T's in text to text transfer transformer. Not only that, you're going to be hearing about C4. It's a data set. It's a cleaned version of a data set crawled from common crawl or collected from common crawl. And it's a clean version. So it's going to be a little bit smaller than the common crawl itself. So it's going to be a huge data set. It's 750 gigs. Common crawl, what is that? There is 20 terabytes of scraped text from the internet. These are textual data and they are, these are 20 terabytes per each month. So when I was mentioning that the entire internet is in front of you, I wasn't joking. This is the entire internet, okay? And there is all sorts of uh, dirty language, misused language, uh, anything that you can imagine, you can find it in there. And it's unlike Wikipedia, which is sort of cleaned already, this one needs a lot of effort to be cleaned. So one of the contributions of this paper is actually uh, taking a 20 terabyte of data, clean it, and turn it into 750 gigs. And these data sets, uh, I don't think you are going to be able to work with them given the resources that we have, but it's actually a good idea to try to take a look at them somehow. Okay, perfect. What is T5? So this was about the data. What is the actual model doing? I remember one of you asking me, can BERT handle variable length sequences as the output? And my answer at that time was no, but you can modify BERT to do so. And this is exactly what we are doing here. So you can modify a transformer to handle that. And we know one framework is actually the encoder-decoder type of architecture, the original transformer from translation. But that's not the only way of doing it. And if you manage to do that, you can put a large class of problems under the same umbrella. What are those? You can say translate English to German. That's your prompt. You can say what you want your English sentence, and then T5 is gonna output the translation. Das ist gut. You go to Kola sentence, and for that, the, it's a classification task, and you're saying, is this acceptable or not? Grammatically speaking, is this correct or not? And the sentence could be, the course is jumping well. It should be going well, but it's saying the course is jumping well. T5 is gonna tell you not acceptable. So those zero and one classification problems, you are turning them actually to outputting a sequence. The next one is uh, you have two sentences and the question is how similar are those sentences together? And in this case, now you're outputting a number. It's a scalar from zero to five. How similar are these two sentences together? And out of T5, you're gonna output a word. This is just 3.8 as a word. Here it was not acceptable as a word. Does is good. That's a sequence of words. So you're turning everything into a sequence goes in, a sequence comes out. For summarization, it's the same thing. There is a text, there is the prompt, and then T5 is going to summarize it. And that's why a large class of problems, you're putting them under the same umbrella of text to text transfer. We're doing text to text. Everything in the output is just a text. If it's a scalar, you're going to report the text version of that. If it's a true false or categorical variable in the end, you're going to turn that into a text and report that. Text goes in, text comes out. What is the big idea here? We learned that BERT has this mask token, and throughout the training, uh, your model is going to get biased towards that token, which is not going to be present in your downstream tasks. We saw multiple ways of dealing with that problem. Here's another version. Rather than using a single token, use multiple tokens. You're going to use X and Y or Z or et cetera. These are specialized mask tokens. And then if you mask the first one with X, you're going to mask the second one with Y and so on. What else? We are going to be learning about span birds where rather than randomly masking 15% of your uh, 
tokens at random in a uniform fashion, you're going to be masking consecutive segments. It's the same idea here as well. And then those two consecutive segments, you're going to replace them with a single mask token. That's your input. We learned how to mask the input, but then we know that you're looking for an architecture that's going to output the text. How would you pre-train that architecture? You're going to do the masking in a reverse fashion. Wherever you have thank you, you're going to put X. For inviting was masked, you're going to unmask it here. You're going to put the actual tokens here. Uh, the rest of them, me to your party, you're going to put a Y here. Last, you copy from the input, and then Z is the weak. So you're going to mask whatever that you didn't mask at the input. And then you're going to unmask whatever that you masked at the input. These are going to have different length, and this is going to be your input output of a model that you want to write. And you know that you see that these have different lengths. So the model that you're going to be writing should be doing that. And uh, in terms of the tokenizer, you're going to be using sentence piece tokenizer. Okay, perfect. We, we know that. Let's recap the type of masking strategies that we have been doing so far. One of them was the encoder type of masking where you don't mask at all and everybody is paying attention to everybody else. And the way that you're going to interpret this is Y1 is paying attention to X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. Y4 is paying attention to everybody, all of the Xs. For causal masking, which was a decoder part of a transformer, you would mask half of your matrix here. Y1 is going to pay attention to X1 only. Y2 is going to pay attention to X1 and X2, etc. And there is this other version, which is actually going to help us with taking variable uh, length outputs or outputting variable length outputs. And that's this idea that some portion of your text, you're going to keep paying attention to them all the time. So x1, x2, x3, everybody is going to pay attention to them. But then x4 and x5 have this causal masking strategy. And that's an intermediate version between causal and fully visible. Then let's uh, borrow these ideas. One solution is you can go with the encoder decoder type of architecture for original transformer. You have your encoder, which is gonna encode this input sentence. It's gonna take a sequence of four elements as input. It's gonna output another sequence of four elements, but then your target is gonna be shorter. For that, each one of those is gonna pay attention to every single input. And then you can put your decoder, which is the masking strategies, which is causal. So that's the causal masking strategy. It's a slight modification of what you have with uh, the original transformer architecture, but still it has the same flavor. There is encoder, decoder, and every single index in the decoder is paying attention to every single index of the encoder. Another strategy is concatenate your input and output sequences together. You have x1, x2, x3, y1, y2. And then your task is predict, for instance, dot here. Or if you know x1, x2, x3, y1, predict y2. Or if you know x1, x2, x3, predict y1, etc. And this is using this other masking strategy, the causal masking. There's another one, prefixed and then, which is going to be using this causal with prefixes. The portion of the text, which is the input, and you want to always pay attention to them, you're going to have forward and backward type of attention. So everybody pays attention to everybody else. And then the other ones are one-sided. And T5 is actually going to be using this architecture here. But all of them are viable options. They're going to give you almost the same and comparable level of performance. But one of them is going to win by a margin by a short margin. In terms of your object, that was the architecture. This was your data. In terms of your loss function, your objective function, you have different types of objectives. Uh, this paper is a long one. It's very long. And it actually has a flavor of a review paper in an organized fashion, trying to control for the data size, trying to control for the model size, and then trying to uh, study every single choices that people made before this paper. That's why you have three different architectures here.
and you have multiple different objectives. One of them could just be uh, prefix language modeling, which is about predict the target one word at a time. And that's going to be your last function. You can have BERT style type of masking where you mask some of your words you don't change and some of your words you're going to replace by a random word from your dictionary. There is deshuffling where you shuffle a sentence and you ask the model to deshuffle it. There is mask style type of masking, which is don't just use those 15% and mask them. It's a simplified version of BERT. Don't replace 10% of the masks with a random token or with a random word. There is IID noise and where you're replacing spans, we are gonna cover that paper. You're gonna span parts of your text. There is this other one where you remove something, you don't replace it with any mask of any sort, and then you ask just output whatever that was masked or which was removed, which was dropped. Then there is a random span, which is what we are doing here with this type of uh, masking strategy. Okay, so far so good. So the only difference between this IID noise and random spans is that you're gonna replace spans at the input. That one is just masking tokens. This one is masking spans at the input. Okay, so far so good. In terms of your objective function, we explained it. How do you actually optimize it? The learning rate matters, and not only the choice of the learning rate, how you actually give it a schedule also matters. And this is the type of scheduling that this paper chooses. The optimizer is going to be a modified version of Adam. It's Ada Factor. We don't have time to go through that, but it's good to know what optimizer to use. And then uh, you're going to work with different data sets for pre-training. You do pre-training on these data sets, and then you do transfer on the downstream tasks on different benchmarks. The most famous one is GLUE and Stanford question answering. Then the bigger data set is transferring the best. And the pre-training data also matters. Its size matters, uh, how clean it is, is the pre-trained data more related to a particular downstream task, yes or no, that one also matters. So this table is sort of inconclusive. Depending on the downstream, maybe one of these pre-trained data is doing better. Any questions about T5? Which uh, objective function is that final table for? It's the random span. Okay. And then the other question I had was, I think you mentioned that the causal with prefix helped with variable length inputs. How does that work? Uh, so this causal with prefix, it is exactly this architecture here. So you're going to be using this causal masking strategy with prefix to output variable length, basically. You give it an input sequence, you give it the same version of the input sequence shifted to the right, but then you have to be careful which ones are paying attention to who based on this causal masking strategy. But if your question is uh, how do these compare to each other, there is nothing on this slide that's going to tell us that. So for that, you need to take, the, take a look at the paper and some of the tables okay, and some of the numbers. Is it possible to use BPE with this architecture? Uh, yes, actually, because most of this is about uh, English. And for English, we noticed that you can separate your text or pre-tokenize it by looking at the space here and then pre-tokenize that way and then use byte-pair encoding. For English, you don't see much difference between sentence piece and byte-pair encoding you're going to start to notice differences when you use other languages, maybe Japanese, maybe Chinese. And if you remember for sentence piece, you had two strategies. One of them was byte pair encoding, and the other one was the Unigram language model. This paper is using Unigram language model. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, for English, uh, you are not going to see much difference. Any other questions about T5, about C4, about masking strategies? about the objective function. So usually papers in deep learning, in machine learning are around six to seven pages. This one is really long. So it's, if I remember correctly, it's more than 50 pages. And it's more than 50 pages because it is actually trying to compare all of these methods 
to each other. But in the end of the day, this is the architecture or the big picture that I want you to take home. The cool thing about T5 is that you are putting a lot of different problems under the same umbrella, which is next word prediction task. Okay, perfect. Any other questions about T5? Awesome.